So this was not the video I was expecting to make this week. But with all the news and speculation going on, I think I should give my two cents on the whole topic, especially since I think I can provide a unique perspective as somebody who is much more of a casual model train enjoyer. So this is very much an opinion piece, so take all my words with a grain of salt. And for those of you who are here for your usual MT video, I'd suggest clicking off. This is a very different video than what I usually produce. So for those of you staying, I'll try and keep this short as possible. You've got better things to do with your time. This video is split up into five main parts. Number one, store closures. Number two, prices. Three, the current interest in the hobby. Four, the current demographics of the hobby. And five, does the new generation even like trains? So let's get into this. It's pretty complicated. First off, store closures. Haddon's and MB Klein are the big ones, and this was the big shutdown that got everyone panicking. And as of writing this, they cite a changing market, declining customer base, changing customer demographics, and supply chain disruption. Okay, these all make sense. But we have to remember that Bachman UK and Hattons were no longer partnered together, resulting in Bachman products no longer being stocked at Hattons. This most likely contributed to the declining customer base as Bachman has one of the largest selections for UK modelers. So they have to go to other retailers to purchase these products. Another contributing factor is Hatton's purchase of MB Klein in 2023, the owners of Model Train Stuff. So that probably was quite a large hit on their finances as well. It's not just this big online store that has closed down either. Local brick and mortar stores have been closing down in the past 10 years. And another contributing factor to this is just where we choose to buy our trains. We live in a world of online commerce and small brick and mortar stores have certainly suffered. It's rare to find train specific stores anymore and the ones that remain usually stock used equipment. There's no reason to waste your gas going to a store in the hopes that they might have the product you are looking for when you can simply boot up a website that has the product within seconds and then have it shipped to your door without having to step foot outside or interact with a real human being. We might not like to admit it, but most of us will gladly take convenience over supporting local or small stores, and don't even get me started on the used market. Number two, prices. This is where a lot of people point the blame of the hobby quote unquote dying at. Well, trains have just always been expensive. I've seen people look at an old catalog page and exclaim, wow, look at all this stuff you get for this price, without thinking about inflation. The buying power of the dollar has significantly declined since this set's release in 1969. Nice. Adjusted for inflation, this set costs, in today's money, 267 US. If you need a more extreme example, here's Lionel's legendary 700E Hudson. This retailed for $75 when it came out. Here it is adjusted for inflation. Prices have always been high, but due to outside factors, we may have actually rationalized the prices on these items in our heads. Plus, detail on modern locomotives and cars is just simply leaps and bounds above the quality of detail from the ones from yesteryear. Of course, we don't all buy brand new. Judging by personal experience at train shows, the used market is very much alive and well. We buy trains used for more reasons than just it's cheaper. Models go out of production, you may be looking for a pre-modified or customized model, or maybe you're looking for a project to customize yourself. And speaking of shows, Number three, interest in the hobby. Amherst is one of the largest train shows in the United States. In 2024, Amherst welcomed 26,000 people through its doors. It's hard to call a hobby dead with numbers like that. I attended four shows last year and they've always been packed with people for about 90% of the time that the show is open. Sales are solid. I've sold myself and from my time selling, there's a lot of young people looking to get into the hobby. You don't even have to look that hard to find young people in the hobby. Number four, current demographics. Let's think about the current demographics. We are in the midst of a shift in the market. And I think DIY and Digital Railroad put it best by saying, model railroading is not dying, it is changing. Yes, the inexpensive trains have mostly disappeared, but those were geared more for the toy market and that is a far more competitive and fickle market. Accuracy and detail have become the name of the game in the hobby. And the hobby is more about creating a work of art that you love rather than hauling out a tub of trains to play with. This is the most rational explanation I've heard to how this hobby can be said to be dying while still thriving. Toy stores no longer carry trains. They're no longer meant to be treated as simple playthings anymore, but rather are seen more as an art form now. 
it's not about collecting every single train anymore, but it's about appreciating the craft and detail and artistry of each one. Model rail running is also now even more accessible than it was even 20 years ago. With the advent of new technology, hobbyists using 3D printers have actually begun to offer kits right out of their own homes. Number five, do young people even like trains? So let's first give a collective eye roll for all those who claim young people just don't like trains. Ugh. This statement is bullshit. Saturday Evening Post quotes manufacturer scale trains and says, numbers on the manufacturing side of the hobby look promising too. Robinson cites the success of Tennessee based model train manufacturer scale trains, which he says the, has an average customer age of 35, meaning younger people are getting invested. In a world of digital entertainment, trains are still popular, not just in physical form, but also in digital form. Video games are commonly blamed for the supposed downfall of model railroading and interest in trains, but there are plenty of modelers who enjoy video games and model railroading simultaneously. I am one of them. If anything, sales of train-related video games like Train Simulator and new to the game Rolling Line continue to show interest for trains. Some of the younger generations have never experienced the wonder of trains due to no fault of their own. They haven't ridden passenger trains or been scared off by those who oppose trains. And yet there are still modelers in this generation. All the photos I have used in this segment have been primarily taken by a younger generation embracing a love for trains. With the growing urbanist movement among younger people, it's only natural that a love of trains will continue to flourish with new generations. Model railroading is certainly not dead. In fact, the hobby seems to be on the rise. It's just no longer the idea of simply playing trains, but driven forth by treating trains as an art form. Trains as a toy may have died, but there's no indicator that the entire hobby is going to be dragged down with it. The younger generations have in fact embraced the hobby and a love of trains and are ready to take it to new heights.